Hello, thank you for watching this video. This is the first video in a series of videos about organizational success. Organization is defined loosely here. It could be an entire college, but what you'll learn in this series is also works well for a department, an office, a work unit, or even a family. Paired together with this video series is a set of activities that are designed to support action on the concepts described in these videos. This first video will give you a brief overview of the modules in the series, and then we'll jump into an overview of your mission, vision, and values. Here are the eight modules, the seven categories in the Baldrige model, plus this introduction in the series. It'll make the most sense to watch them in order, but feel free to jump around a bit if there's a specific topic of interest to you. These modules are designed in a flipped format. This video provides an overview of the content, and then there are a series of activities that should be completed that support the content of these videos. I'd be happy to facilitate these activities or discuss with you the content of these videos or present to a small group at any time. So please contact me at jeremy-penn at uiowa.edu if you have an interest in that. So thank you for coming along on this journey with me, and I hope you find it helpful. So let's get right to it. We will start by considering what you're about and how you're about it, your mission, vision, and values. This idea is the foundation of all the other modules in the series. Imagine for a moment if you wanted to make a movie. You get a meeting with MGM, say, to pitch your movie, and their first question is going to be, what's your movie about? You probably would not get very far if you said, well, I don't know what it's about, but I think we need $250 million to film it. The same thing is true about organizations. You cannot take steps to improve an organization until you have a firm understanding of what your organization seeks to achieve. Consider for a moment the decisions you make in your area. Who you hire, how you have them spend their time, how you allocate resources, what products and services you provide, and how you know if you're succeeding. It's very difficult to make these decisions if you do not have a clear understanding of your mission. Having a clear mission will help you answer all of these questions. At its core, a mission statement should summarize exactly what you're attempting to accomplish. Here's a few examples. The Alzheimer's Association has as its mission statement to eliminate Alzheimer's disease through the advancement of research, to provide enhanced care for all affected, and to reduce the risk of dementia through the promotion of brain health. Reading that mission statement, you have a clear sense of what they seek to accomplish. Apple's mission is to bring the best personal computing products and support to students, educators, designers, scientists, engineers, business persons, and consumers in over 140 countries around the world. Again, this clearly communicates why Apple exists and what they want to achieve. For Tesla, their mission is to accelerate the world's transition to sustainable energy. Their work with electric cars, for example, is a natural outflow of this mission. The best mission statements describe what you do and why you exist. They describe your cause, or the issue that you're working on, and your actions, what you do. It's also important to be concise, to be realistic, and to be inspirational. One easy way to test the quality of a mission statement is to consider, would you wear it on a t-shirt? If you're part of the College of Education, it's also important for you, for you to align your mission statement to the college's mission statement, shown here. Vision statements are distinct from mission statements in that they seek to describe a future state, where the organization is headed, and the impact of what you're attempting to achieve on the future. For example, Feeding America's vision statement is for a future in which there is no hunger. If they're successful, a hunger-free America is what the future will look like. The best vision statements describe the impact of the work. What would change for the better if your work is successful? What would the world look like if the future were in, in the future if you were successful? Again, if you're in the College of Education, Here's the college's vision statement so you can consider how your area will align with the college's vision. Organizational values describe the core ethics or principles that will be followed by the organization. Defining these values in advance provide a framework that can be used to inform decisions. This is particularly important when decisions are difficult. The values in the College of Education include collaboration and engagement, commitment to community, continuous improvement, diversity and inclusion, equity, excellence, innovation, and integrity. Your mission, vision, and values are the bedrock for all your organizational improvement work. 
In the next few slides, I'll provide a brief overview of the Baldrige model of organizational improvement. Roger Ebert, one of my favorite film critics, described his philosophy of film review by saying, it's not what a movie is about, it's how it's about it. For example, consider movies about British spies. Two recent examples include No Time to Die, the latest movie in the Bond franchise about a super spy who uses gadgets and his wits to defeat supervillains, and in contrast, Johnny English, a British spy spoof that features Mr. Bean playing a bumbly, happy-go-lucky British spy. These movies are both about British spies and about saving the world, but they're about that subject in very different ways. That they are both about being a British spy doesn't make them good or bad, but how they tell the story about being a British spy is what matters. In the same way, the Baldrige model will not tell you what you should be about. You bring your mission, your vision, and your values to Baldrige. Where Baldrige will help you, though, is in reflecting upon how you're about what you're about. The Baldrige Organizational Performance Model is named after Malcolm Baldrige, who was the U.S. Secretary of Commerce from 1981 to 1987 under Ronald Reagan, and he was known for leading the transformation of organizations in the manufacturing industry. He did not necessarily develop the performance model himself, but it was named after him in his honor. The Baldrige model shown here is made up of seven components, leadership, strategy, customers, measurement analysis and knowledge management, workforce, operations, and results. These seven categories are all framed under the, um, under the umbrella of the organization's profile, which includes the mission, vision, and values, and other topics like organizational context, competitors, and strategic challenges. I'll talk more in depth about these seven components or categories in the other modules, but we'll take a moment now to tell you a little bit about each of them and what they contain. The leadership category is about how the organization is led and governed, who makes decisions, who determines priorities, and so on. It also asks you to consider how your organization makes societal contributions. Category two is about strategy, how you develop your strategy, and how you implement your strategy. Category three is about students and other customers, how you, how you listen to them, how you understand what they need, how you build and design programs and services to meet those needs, how you build relationships with them, and how you determine the satisfaction and engagement of students and other customers. Category four is about how you measure, analyze, and improve performance, how you manage information and data to inform organizational knowledge. Category five is about your workforce, the faculty and staff who complete the work, and includes how the workforce is recruited, hired, prepared, and supported to achieve high performance. Category six is about operations, how you design, manage, and improve programs and services, and how effective management is ensured. And finally, category seven is all about results. Results for student learning, for other customers, for the workforce, for leadership and governance, for financial viability, and strategy. To illustrate how the Baldrige model works together, I'm going to present a hypothetical example from the automotive industry. Having owned multiple cars over my lifetime, I've come to recognize there's great differences in reliability. I'm not going to name any names here, but <clears throat> you know who you are. So why are some cars more reliable than others? After thinking about this question for a while, I think the answer is fairly simple. Reliability is a choice. A choice that's made over other possible choices, such as choosing to make cars with the latest and greatest technology. So how this looks in the Baldrige model is like this. Leaders create and set a vision for building reliable cars. They then develop a strategy and implement a strategy for producing reliable cars. They listen to customers to understand what reliability means to customers and what trade-offs customers are willing to make to get reliable cars. They then carefully collect, monitor, and share data on their ability to create reliable cars and learn from their data to improve. They then select and train the workforce to build reliable cars and incentivize, incentivize the workforce to build highly reliable cars through their efforts. Next, they develop and improve the manufacturing process to result in reliable cars. And finally, they track results to see if it's working. That's the Baldrige model all put together. In future modules, we'll look at each of those seven categories in more depth and consider how to use the concepts from these seven categories to support improvement in your area. In this module, there's only one activity, which is the Mission, Vision, and Values Activity Worksheet. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.